From Mulgai to Fort William, the West Highland Way is a 96 mile hike that traverses through one of the most beautiful places on this planet, the Highlands of Scotland. The West Highland Way offers incredible landscapes, breathtaking and idyllic scenery along a challenging route. So back in July 2020, I set off on my first ever long distance hike and what an incredible one to begin with. I took my time on the route as it took about 10 days to complete and through the Strava app which tracked my miles I hiked a total of 117 miles of the 96. This includes any diversions um, when looking for a place to eat and camp for the night. So as a solo hiker I completed this journey alone although I joined a couple of the hikers for a few of the days. I spent five nights while camping, three nights at campsites and two nights staying at Bothy's. From camping, campfires and everything else in between, I comply with the leave no trace principles which is what everyone should follow when camping and hiking. Just be considerate of others and your surroundings, clean up any mess, don't vandalise and don't litter. So if you wanted to know any questions about the hike, my how I packed throughout my journey, feel free to ask any questions in the comments, I'd be happy to answer, or check out the description because I've left quite a bit of information there. Also feel free to like and subscribe, and I really hope you enjoy the video.
This is the sign I'm uh, following, by the way. The Scottish thistle. It's pretty well signposted. I don't really have to look at my map that much. through the Garabon Forest, which is a beautiful area of woodland and it's uh, popular for wild campers and hikers and I'm not surprised because if look at this spot I've just found, this would be beautiful to stop in because it's a little fire pit and you've got a beautiful view. I mean it's close to the path but not that many people come up here. the choice to follow the path via Conic Hill, which is pretty big, or not and downhill. Any other day I would go up the hill, but not today. I'm, I'm kind of making myself feel bad for not going up Conic Hill. <laughs> I'm just saying to myself, oh, you're so lazy. You know, push yourself hard, but considering Sit down. Considering um, last night how I walked uh, until I physically couldn't, and my feet paid the price for sure. They're okay this morning, but um, I don't. I kind of don't want to push that again because it's only day two, and if I actually injure myself, and I know that sounds a bit dramatic, it's only my feet. But if I injure my feet, then it sucks for the rest of the walk. It's gonna. I'm just gonna suffer. <laughs> so I'm kind of not the laziest thing to do. I mean, this whole walk isn't very lazy, but I kind of want to take the low road this time. I usually go the higher road, but I'm just feeling it.
to follow the shoreline of Loch Lomond that you can kind of see through the trees down there. It's pretty cool. It was funded to celebrate the turn of the new millennium, so it's pretty wonderful. something about little wooden bridges like this that I just love. They're so simple and to see other walkers on this trail and wild campers because we're doing this trail is a sense of solitude which is what appeals to most people and it's really cool but there's no kind of a loneliness aspect to it even if you are you know walking miles from everyone else or camping 
in what seems in the middle of nowhere, there's kind of that solitude, but you don't feel, well, I don't feel lonely, especially when you pass other people, and it's just pretty amazing. And everyone's been so lovely so far, said hi, and a conversation with, and yeah, it's just a beautiful trail to be on, in that sense, and in the obvious kind of, you know, and the views and the kind of spirit of it.
just left the Reward and Inn Hotel and had some soup and two pints of Scottish lager and I'm with a beautiful view and I'm feeling a little tipsy to be honest and I've just been told by another hiker that apparently this stretch to the next stop is one of the most difficult points on the journey so that's something to look forward to <laughs> Definitely go on this if it can hold the weight of me with this giant bag. Getting on it would be a start. Okay. Ready? than I should have. I've got a lot of uh, time to make up for. <laughs> Loads of really nice wild camping spots along the way, like this, little cleared out areas. People can just stop here, but I want to press on maybe about a mile or two further. Okay, it's not showing up very well in here, but this bit's kind of steep. This has actually been my favourite part of the trail so far, not only because I'm passing through amazing woodlands next to Loch Lomond, but because the path is interesting because it's pretty treacherous. I've not been able to film most of it because I've had to use both hands due to slippery mossy rocks and uh, things like that. Narrow and then it drops down to the log, so I love it. It's been really cool and uh, the most interesting and challenging part, so yeah. I thought it'd be worth to mention that I'm completely sobered up now because I mentioned earlier that I was a bit tipsy after just two pints so uh, it's a good job that I have a word of advice guys if you're doing this part don't drink more than two pints because because god knows how I would have handled this probably would have had to stop earlier on but all good 
honestly this is exactly what I pictured when I thought of the West Highland Way. You've got the mountains in the distance, you can't see those ones behind the clouds, but what they are as a whole. And uh, just wild kind of shrubbery to kind of journey through. Kind of rainforesty, jungly vibes. I love it. I love Scotland. It's beautiful. This little area would be perfect for me tonight, but I kind of want to walk a bit further. I've only done seven and a half miles today, which uh, in comparison to the past two days where I've done 13 miles each day, uh, I guess you do at least another mile, even though I think it is. It's got like a fire pit and uh, campfires are allowed around here as well, if they're close to the lock. Perfect, it's sheltered by woodlands. But yeah, I think I'm gonna walk further, even though I really wanna stay here. <laughs> I'll go back like somewhere just as nice. So we'll see. Oh, this feels like Scotland. I mean, obviously, but the mist across the lock creating this insane atmosphere of kind of a mystical i probably used that word before on this trip but best way to describe it to be honest mystical kind of comforting airiness i don't know if it makes sense when you look at this but it feels good these steps are a lot steeper than they seem on here another perfect spot to camp right here. There's a little fire pit over there. But I feel like, I don't know, I, I want to camp here but I feel like I should go further. Like, like I want to go further but I want to stay here. It's a little close to the path but it's not a huge deal but I'd prefer to be further away. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go about another half a mile, a mile further maybe. And another beautiful spot with a fire pit and with the lock just right there. But again, I'm gonna go further. But I don't want to, but I do. I'm so indecisive, I don't even know. I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm just gonna walk. covered floors and the tall trees it just feels like a, like I'm in a fairy tale <laughs> smelling these woodlands is incredible it's like the smell of forest mulch with that after the rain kind of smell in the freshest air you can imagine and pine my all-time favorite small pine so right now i'm in my element this is it 
This is like me. <laughs> this is perfect. Also, there's loads of ruins of old, old structures, old buildings covered in moss, which is the best aesthetic ever for one. And it's so interesting. Like this is like a house-looking thing. Like, check it out. This is so cool. Oh my god, and this as well. There's like no better place to find these old cobbled moss covered ruins. I mean, this is amazing. I can't been there, but I feel like I should go a bit further still. I think there's a bothy. I hope it's a bothy. That would be so cool. There's smoke coming out the chimney, so there's definitely people in there. Imagine staying in a bothy in a place like this. Not even, it doesn't feel real. It's not staying yet. It's not. This is incredible. It was all over the place. Imagine the people that lived there uh, back when that was built. and some firewood and some loads and just these twigs that will burn nicely on the floor and they're all dry as well it's like it didn't rain here at all I definitely didn't down there
plywood, putting stuff on the fire before it gets dark. And that's, uh, if you can see, that the white is lock of the wind down there. And that's the bothy. And all behind is this great expanse of the woodland. And it is so freaking cool. So we've come down to the lock to see it before it gets dark and to get some driftwood because there's quite a lot of it on the shores. Some more. Is that what's in the rain? Sure. <laughs> 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 you can uh, see it, it so cool. Radio doesn't matter what they listen to or what they buy, and they, they, they're, they're literally sitting on a prison cell, and they're just being drummed in all this stuff. Right. Like it must be absolutely horrific. You know what I mean? And it's they having to get their well, food and all that delivered, and somebody's got a mask on and all that. It must be absolutely oh, terrifying. Scared, scared, scared for You know, same. So if all the other developed, undeveloped nations then became developed. They're about to get enough food to go around and they're, they're struggling at the moment. The others have left, are already on the way, I'm the last to leave as usual. This is a really cool bothy, first ever bothy stay. And it was pretty amazing, I slept really well. The fire kept us warm. Really simple, but so cool. I noted a few times that it feels like a uh, Skyrim. <laughs> Amazing.
forest. Last night was amazing. First ever stay in a bothy, as I said, and uh, there was Edward and Farron, a couple uh, from Glasgow who had come up for the day and who every now and then stay at bothies in the Highlands, which is really cool. If you have it on your doorstep, you might as well, you know. Uh, you've got uh, Dave and Martin, a Scottish guy and a guy from the south who came up together doing the same uh, trail as me, West Island White, as well as a French guy called Maxime, who's also doing the trail. He left pretty early though, so, and he, he seemed like a very fast walker, so <laughs> I don't know if I'll be catching him again, but the other two I might see at the next bothy, uh, Dernbury, Dernbury, if I pronounce that correctly, which is about eight miles away, so that's the plan, it's perfect. It's a bit less than what I've been doing the past few days, but it's fine because my feet hurt. <laughs> so it gives them a bit of a rest. And I need to stay at Doombury because I've seen pictures of it. It's the only bothy I know of on the trail. Like I didn't know about that one. It was a really nice surprise. But this one's at the end of Loch Lomond and uh, it looks beautiful basically. So we'll see when we get there, hopefully. And hopefully the space for me, I can imagine it'd be a popular one because it's just, such a nice bothy to stay at. And there's a look. My lens got a little streaky there because I was putting on some uh, uh, bog myrtle lotion which keeps like midges and insects away and treats bites and things like that which luckily I don't really have many of. Craig Roston would probably mispronounce that but that's where I am right now. New Woodland area.
to Rob Rose Cave. Let's see the people from the Bothy last night. I think it's down there somewhere. at Rob Roy's cave, all the way through that jungle. We saw the cave entrance pretty much, so we've just gotta make our way back through these rocks. It's pretty clear water, I don't know if you can see. I can see the stones quite well through it. Yeah, uh, it was 
Dann mal ab, bitte. Gut.
so I've walked about just over three miles from uh, the Goth Bay to Benglass campsite and even though I've only walked about three or four miles I'm staying here for the night and I'm just looking for a place to pitch up <laughs> so my feet are killing and yesterday was supposed to be my uh, slow day I was only supposed to do a few miles but it took a lot longer than expected to get to the Goth and I walked for like 10 miles so I did quite a bit not as much as the first few days but today's gonna be my rest and we have a bar and restaurant here too so in a place for a shower which is good because my hyper stink is just starting to set in and we got a view of these hills so it just means I don't have to wall camp which I do enjoy but it's uh, nice to have like facilities every now and then it's a really nice place as well
stones from the 18th century and some from the 17th. These are the ruins of St. Philan's or Philian's, how do you pronounce it, is Priory, endowed by Robert Bruce in 1317. No, you're not. I've actually just read that these stones, the graveyard, is from the 8th century. Absolutely ancient. I up my tent by the river down there but you can't get to it because there's a fence like that but there's a gate around here 
I can get to the river and uh, I'm gonna fill up my water. Oh, this is a cool place, look at that. Yeah, it's the ISS. Somewhere in the fields around here is where Robert the Bruce's great sword is um, said to be buried and uh, has never been found. It's uh, from the battle in 1306.
Hey guys! There's a popular wild camping spot right here. There's a couple of there's just three tents there and one there. And it is by the Bridge of Gorky, which is just in view. You can see it from there, just through the trees. I've come to collect some firewood and I've come across this huge pile of dead dry wood, which would be perfect in these big branches if I can carry them back. I'm gonna go um, attempt it. Today is the eighth day, I think, and I'm aiming to do 15 miles today, which would be the longest stretch so far. So I got an early start this morning. Got up a couple hours earlier than I usually do. And just set off, you know, in the rain. It's died down a bit now, but it's quite cool actually because I'm already starting to break a sweat. I'm only about 20 minutes in.
sure if you could hear anything I'll say in the last video over the noise of the wind, but I was just talking about the cuts planting and clear rain and cloud everywhere. And uh, that's a lot of colour. Just look at the contrast between those clouds, those low clouds hiding those mountains. Clear blue skies over there. This is incredible. It says in 1803 the government commissioned this guy. It's called Telford's Parliamentary Roads to build some new roads, some uh, nicer roads to because it was falling into a state of disrepair so it was for like more commercial traffic and now it's used for the west highland way and no vehicles are allowed on it so that's pretty cool and i heard there are deer around here as well so i'm gonna keep an eye out and be quiet for them hopefully spot some of them and this is uh the west highland way map that's where it started more guy at fire islands fort william I am that, so good two thirds of the way. Yeah, cool. Couple days left, I'd say. no one around for miles what's about five miles and not seen anyone this is this is amazing this is kind of like what i expect of the scottish highlands in terms of isolation and it just feel i've never felt so isolated before but definitely not a bad feeling definitely not it feels incredible about halfway to Glencoe from the Bridge of Orkey and it is only about 1.30 so I'm making really good time. I'm going to stop here to at this really cute bridge to fill up some water, a water bottle and um, have something to eat I think. It's really nice here.
most tranquil I've ever felt, I think. but again in a good way in a really good way I'm just kind of thinking this landscape hasn't changed in thousands of years thousands of years and, and it won't change for a thousand more which hopefully it might it never will <laughs> I'll say like this hopefully it will never change because this is it's not picking up but those mountains behind those clouds are just god aren't you running feel insignificant compared to everything um kind of like if anything you know if anything happened to me my, uh, wouldn't make a difference to anything around here whatsoever and my presence doesn't change anything about this landscape i'm just here to be in it and to pass through it and I think, I just think this is the most kind of at peace and calm I've ever felt. Like I, I'm, tr I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that I'm here. And this is a place and I'm in it. Because it's just one of the best places I've ever seen and been to this, this whole trip. And I feel like I said, my presence doesn't make a difference to this landscape and, and everything. But I've, and I feel and I feel really grounded, knowing that, and uh, really calm, and really alive. Explain it, you just gotta come here yourself. I mean, everyone should do this. This walk and come here, everyone should. Because no video, no picture, no words can describe the visual and the feeling that you get from being here. about these huge boulders moved by ancient glacial movements years and years ago, thousands of years ago. Most people have seen it about seven, seven or eight miles. All that I've just walked, and right over there, the furthest set of trees you can see. From there to here, that's only about a third of what I've walked today. There's a long way just that right on the horizon. Another big erratic boulder over there, and here, and here. Everywhere. Apparently around this area, it's a huge area, but somewhere around this area, Clan MacDonald gave shelter to, to Campbells uh, for about a week and the Campbells slaughtered them up and leaving. Not very polite, is it? 
and that was in 1692 when that happened, I forgot to say. And I actually passed a little ruin back there, quite far away, but definitely an old, like, old house ruin, stone house ruin, with a old looking, worn path, but overgrown path lead into it so someone obviously lived there so maybe that was that maybe that was the place crazy to think that horrific violent kind of you know stuff like that mass slaughter and mass murders and battles have happened in such serene peaceful beautiful places such as this but it happens it happens everywhere especially scotland back in the day <laughs> Co Mountain Resort. We have a ski lift, chair lift up here, but I'm not sure if it's open because of the pandemic. But I hope it is because I've been looking forward to it, but it doesn't look like it's moving up there. tonight by the King's Head Hotel just over there. It's a popular log camping spot. There's quite a few other tents around. And I've got a view of the river and the trees. That is so cute. Oh my god. a lot of rain last night. It's nice and sunny now but um, <laughs> under my tent is liquid. Kept nice and dry in here though. All good. That's where I stayed last night and it's like I was never there. So it should be. There's no trace.
Okay, it's my most dreaded part of um, this trip. And I think I'm just at the bottom of it because it hasn't been too bad so far. It's still a little steep, but apparently this incline is about over 500 meters above sea level, something like that, or feet, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to check that, but it is, it's high up. staircase is where I've just come from and yeah it was the highest point in the whole West Highland way and it was intense drained my energy I had to stop for, <laughs> for some food in my bag but it was incredible because now I'm in this place just outside of the Kinloch if I'm pronouncing that right Spot it right by the path and took him not cleaving. Trees and mountains, but I'm gonna go further and see what else there is. Leaving Kinloch Cleveland now. I'm packed up and it's raining. I'm under a shelter at the moment. 
I'm about to leave and just look at these beautiful mountains that surround and the clouds. It just looks so, so mystical. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna um, aim to do the whole 16 miles to Fort William today, so I should arrive late evening, early night time, and then get trained first thing tomorrow. In the rain, it's fine, I'm gonna walk through the sun, so I'm looking forward to it. Climbed up here from all the way down there in the town of King Labour, and it's still very rainy and white and grey in the sky. But even a day like like this, you know, people like say miserable, damp and grey, it's still just it's. I'm astounded that I'm, I've made it this far and I'm up here and I can see just for those clouds. I'm obsessed with the clouds passing through the hills. I just keep thinking to myself, wow. This feels mystical, magical, whatever, you know, like um, soaking through because under my waterproofs it's sweat from the climb and from outside, like my face and my arms, because I had to roll my sleeves up, I'm just too warm right now, you know, from the rain. But, you know, I'm still happy. I'm still grateful to be here and sort of walked this far and I've still got another, oof, 14, 14, 13, 12 miles to go, but I feel like that bit was quite difficult and took me a while because <laughs> it was very steep, not as steep as the Devil's Staircase, oh, oh my god, that was crazy, but just look at this, people here, I hope they know how lucky they are to live here, I mean, like I said, even on a, on a day like today, it's still amazingly beautiful, mm. Mm. just wonderful. For a second I was absolutely mortified and thought the path would take me all the way up there. But luckily I just follow this one. That's up to a mountain is called Ben Nakali. I probably mispronounced it, but yeah.
starting to die down a little. And you can see the sun's getting brighter through the clouds. So that's nice to see. <laughs> I don't think it'll stop raining now. Pursuit of the Campbells, the battle of Inverlochy. It reads, I am Diomed Campbell of Inverall, undone by the blows of the Macdonald Salt. My kinsfolk and now help me flee from Loch Aber. Today, the second day of February 1645, as the sun rose in the sky, Montrose with his Highlanders and Alistair McCullough with his Irishmen attacked and destroyed our army. Fort Arkinbreck, our commander, lies slain in the field of battle. The Lochy River now runs red with the blood of Argyll's finest. We that are left make for, make for our homeland. Through the Lyrig Moor, which is a big pass, Pray God these MacDonald devils do not pursue us any further. We are hunted animals. Whereas we are hunted as animals, we wish of this dying Highlander is to get home back to the land of his fathers, that the Almighty grant me this. So that happened around here where they were like fleeing. And uh, also says, the MacDonalds did pursue the fleeing Campbells to mark the spot where they broke off from the chase. They raised a large stone which was known as Clacknan Kiambelak, probably, definitely mispronounced that, also known as the Stone of the Campbells. The Karen Cairn has repa- replaced the stone. Tradition has it that the MacDonalds, or sympathisers of the Montrose, should add a stone as they pass, and Campbells, or sympathisers of Argyll, take one away. So there's a lot of uh, Montrose sympathisers. People siding with the McDonald's, looks like. Loads of them here. I don't know what to do. I don't really know the history. I don't know the sides of the store. I'm gonna not I'm gonna leave it untouched, I think. And just look at it. Yeah, so pretty brutal. That's Perth for Scotland. <laughs> just as I step down from that sign, that's gonna see the bone. How oh, ominous. Has actually stopped raining. Oh wow, look at those hills. I believe Ben, ne- yeah, ben Nevis comes into view to my right soon, a bit further down the path. I'm excited to see what is up with that sheep, man. Yeah, that sheep. Who was being noisy? Was it you? Oh, you guys. <laughs> you meet so many nice people on this trail. I've just come across a, a father and a daughter and they're out here looking for waterfalls and just for a nice little stroll. We drove up on that road from Fort William and I asked how far and um, they said just a few miles, probably about an hour or two's walk, which is very encouraging. <laughs> Um, and they even offered me a lift into Fort William and despite my uh, cold, wet clothes I said no because it wouldn't be walking the full West Highland way but I was very tempted to accept their offer because a lift right now would be so nice but I'd never feel like I fully did it if I did accept the lift <laughs> so still enjoying myself out here uh, there's a campsite near Glen Nevis with a view of Ben Nevis, so I can't wait to see that and to see Ben Nevis. It's going to be exciting. So I'm really looking forward to that when the train tomorrow. I feel quite emotional coming to the end of this trail because I've only got a few miles left and even though I'm wet and I've walked 90 odd miles, 100 miles, I kind of, I'm just not ready for it to finish. I'm, you know, I'm missing my family back at home. I do want to go home, but at the same time, I feel I want to stay out here a bit longer. I think I'm just glad that I've got another night left at least. But this scene right here, this view, Glen Nevis is just around the corner, just beautiful, just, I don't, 
I don't know, it's just, you know, when you see something or when you're in a certain place and you feel grounded, happy, comfortable. It's like me right here now, just standing in this path with all that behind me. A field of sheep and mountains over this red chair and all that in front of me that just that just that picture if I could build a house there and have a window looking out to that every day then I'd be happy forever I imagine I mean god I really am starting to sound emotional Jesus but it's just I don't know it's just a beautiful definitely gonna paint that those wisps of cloud as well I can't even imagine what it looks like on a a clear day as well. Imagine that's beautiful as it is beautiful now. Just thought I'd follow on from a thought from the last video. I just thought I'd uh, interject that that's pretty much my what I want to do like in life, like travel and um, you know like build my own little little tiny house and live sustainably and and you know like work in a, in kind of um, agricultural or ecological or uh, something like that and you know do my art as well so <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna include this I'll cut it out but um, you never know who's gonna watch these if anyone with a beautiful view of whatever nature wise has to be in nature <laughs> has some land only need a teeny tiny little bit of it and i just do that and build somewhere build somewhere i love and where i want to live or it's scotland the lake district anywhere with views like this or similar or just greenery nature trees whatever Am I really going to include this in the video? I don't know, maybe, probably. <laughs> Hello. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> You're very pretty. Hi. what we have here, the highest peak in the UK, Ben Nevis. Not that we can see the peak, but that's okay. <laughs> there it is. Main attraction. It's the only uh, peak of the three peaks that I haven't climbed. I've done Snowden twice, once when I was very little and once when I was a teenager. And Scarfell Pike once, and that was summer 2016. Both time, all times were amazing, so one day I'll climb it. I heard it's quite, um, it's usually like that, really, like cloudy and wet, so, and uh, you know, difficult, but one day I'll do it. I'm excited for that day. <laughs> I'm excited to uh, see all this around me right now. I mean, look at those woods. You can see clouds and, you know, just like evaporating out of them. And, 
you know, it's just not an inspiring place, honestly. Everything about it. I'm sure I've just seen some eagles fly overhead. Honestly, like I couldn't get it on camera because it, it just took me by surprise. But I heard its call and it sounds like what I've heard eagles sound like, so I'm a shaman. If it was, then that is incredible. This place just couldn't get any better, honestly. Salon Way, the way I've just came, Braveheart Car Park and Dundee Rail, Dundee Dale, what? Dun, Dundee Dale, Dundee Dale? I think so, let's say. Desirable residence in Glen Nevis. It was built over two, around 2,000 years ago. It may have been occupied or built on several occasions throughout time. Imagine the people who lived here, their colourful flags and banners pro proclaiming the power of the tribe to which they belonged. The fort dominates the glen, a natural stronghold with amazing views. I'll definitely come back and check that out at some, some point. I don't have time today, unfortunately. I'd love to see it though. It sounds incredible to see up there. I will at some point. just passed a runner he said I might be able to see the peak tomorrow because it's supposed to be clear and apparently there's snow on the top so that would be really cool to see but if not it is Ben Nevis <laughs> still looks pretty incredible and huge and there's Fort William down there that is a beautiful view the light in the distance and campsite down there where I'm hoping to stay out if it's not full just about three, four miles to go now. This is incredible. Despite not even seeing the peak, it's still it's so huge. And I can't, it's, you'll never know on camera, you, you'll never be able to kind of get the kind of the atmosphere, the feeling. It, it's in front of me now and it looks much, much bigger and more gargantuan in person than it does on this. Is it? That's how it is though, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful, beautiful. So close, this is such an incredible feeling. I feel like laughing, I've, it's just, it's overwhelming, but in the best way. So close, oh my God. <laughs>
official end of the West Highland Lane, Fort William. Oh my god. Still got to walk to the train station and to the uh, Saul Pete statue for it to be official, official, but it's the original end. There's two, two ends and I'm going to go to the second end now. <laughs> 